Hi! Supposing I was to turn up to a meeting with a client like this and I asked you for feedback on my appearance, what would you say? The phrases that might come to your mind might be, you look shabby, or you look messy, or you look terrible. Or you might say, you should dress professionally, or you should try your hair back. Or you might say, I don't like the way you've done your hair. Actually, only the last of these three phrases, I don't like the way you've done your hair, is feedback. In this video lesson, we're going to look at best practice in how to share your thoughts, perspectives, feedback in a way that's honest and considerate. And we're going to make a distinction between feedback, advice and judgment. Because people usually think they're giving feedback, but it's usually advice and judgment which leads to some sort of a negative reaction. Let's start by looking at advice. Advice is any sentence that starts with you should or you shouldn't. The subliminal message that you convey when you give advice to someone is that you know more than them on the subject being discussed. That's the underlying assumption that leads you to giving advice, that they don't know what they should do and that you do. Advice works perfectly in only one situation. When you do know more than someone else in a given situation and they agree that you're the expert. So if you're an IT expert and you tell your friend that you, they should install an antivirus software and not click on certain kinds of attachments on the computer and they believe in your experience and expertise, they'll feel grateful instead of feeling offended. But supposing you start giving advice to a peer in a different division on what they should do in their function or a subordinate who used to be a peer and who thinks they should have got promoted instead of you. And you say, you should have done this, or you should not have done this, or you're not doing it the right way. Then you might get a defensive or an aggressive response. So advice is very useful in some situations, but can backfire in others. So let's look at what sharing or feedback is. Sharing often starts with phrases like, I notice, I see, I think. I feel, I believe. The big difference is the word I instead of the word you. Let me give you an example. Supposing you say to a subordinate, you've been more than half an hour late for the last three meetings, even though I've requested to be on time twice before. So I'm beginning to think that you're not concerned that the rest of the team might be waiting for you over here. And I'm feeling really frustrated about that. This might feel very direct, even blunt, but it's actually best practice phrasing according to this model. Let's look at the individual sentences to understand why. Now, if you say you've been late to the meeting by more than half an hour for the last three meetings, and if that's a statement of fact, then it's hard to dispute. The mail's at 10 a.m. and they're walking in at 10.30. Everyone can see that. People don't usually get into arguments over facts. So let's look at the next sentence. I'm beginning to think that you're not concerned. Now, they can't say, no, that's not what you think, because they're your thoughts, and you're the only person who knows what you think. This is a very different statement from saying, you are not concerned, because now you're talking about their thoughts, and you cannot prove that you're right, and they could say, you're wrong, I am concerned. Similarly, if you say, I'm feeling annoyed, they can't say, no, you're not feeling annoyed. As a general rule, you have the final authority to speak on behalf of your emotions. So sharing is all about letting people know what the facts are, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and why you're thinking and feeling that way. It's about sharing your internal experience, something only you have access to, and therefore something that's hard for others to dispute. However, if you said you're lazy, inconsiderate, and you only think about yourself, that would be judgment. And they can dispute that because now you're not stating what you're thinking and feeling, you're telling them what kind of person they are as if it's a fact. It's putting a label on them, calling them a name. And people can, and often do, react negatively to that, especially to negative judgments, both in your professional and personal life. Now, if I tell my husband, you never spend time with me, you're always traveling, you don't care about us, you should spend more time with the kids. I'm giving him judgment and advice, and he's likely to get defensive or counterattack because he's feeling attacked. All these you, you, you statements sound like accusations. But if I tell him, I miss you when you're away, or I feel so happy when you spend time playing with the kids, or I really want to spend some time together this weekend, 
then I'm sharing because I'm revealing what's going inside me. If I tell my subordinate, your performance is not up to the mark, I'm not giving feedback, I'm passing a judgment. If I say I'm disappointed with your performance, I'm sharing feedback. If I tell my boss this initiative won't work, I'm passing a judgment. I'm making the statements as if it's a fact rather than a feeling. If I tell him I'm concerned that the clients won't like this initiative, I'm not telling him what will happen as if I'm a fortune teller, I'm sharing the emotion I feel. Coming back to our first example, if someone told me you're looking strabby, that would be a judgment. They're saying it as if it's an undisputable fact. The structure of the sentence is identical to a statement of fact like you're a Vatika. But if they say, I don't like the way you've done your hair, then they're sharing what they're thinking. They're not implying that everybody else would see it the same way or that there is no other way to look at it. When you think that the way you see a situation is the only way to see it or the right way to see it and everybody else who sees it differently is wrong, then you'll end up giving advice instead of sharing feedback. And people might feel like you're talking down to them unless they really see you as an expert. When you pass a negative judgment on someone, when you tell them what kind of a person you have judged them to be, they will feel, well, judged. But when you're sharing, nobody can tell you that what you're thinking is not what you're thinking, or what you're feeling is not what you're feeling. You can't be wrong. A lot of times people hold themselves back from speaking up because they're afraid that they might say something wrong. But if you're communicating from a place of sharing, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about being honest. And when you shift from telling people what is the right thing to do or what is the right way for them to be, to honestly sharing what you're thinking and feeling, then you can speak with confidence and authority. Because although you may not be seen as the final authority on what is right or wrong, you are the final authority on what you're thinking and feeling. Sharing is therefore a skill that allows you to be honest, direct, humble, open and considerate in your communication. Initially, it might feel a little awkward and forced saying I think or I feel so frequently, but as we practice using sharing as a means of communication, it starts feeling less awkward and completely natural. It becomes a habitual way of speaking. It gives you a great deal of power in conversations as you learn to use it skillfully. Here's an exercise for you to start on that journey. Pick any topic you want. Your thoughts on a recent movie you saw or your government's handling of the COVID pandemic, the performance of your subordinate in the last project, and share your thoughts and feelings with someone without using judgment or advice. 